Hey, how's it going? Just got up, didn't get much sleep, so this is going to be kind of a cheap video. Not bothering with the regular lighting or the nice lens and all that stuff. So, anyway, um, Robert made a response, and I want to respond to his response. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that it's been all nice and calm, and that's good. So, here we go. Now, I'm not going to download his video and then cut it up with my own inner space because I, I feel that lends itself with a video maker to use editing techniques to make it slightly less than fair. I disagree because when people do these sorts of back and forths, you can see the context in which something is said. Now, if if all the context is removed and it's just they're it's cherry pick yeah that's a different thing altogether and yes people can use methods to to mess up what someone has said and uh i do this generally to make sure the context is there so so people know what's actually being discussed you know so i don't do that other people can it's their choice you know whatever but he, he raised a few interesting concepts. Yeah, let's put it that way. When we're talking about, uh, I didn't think it was right to tell people to smile because you're treating them like they're objects. Um, he, he made the comment that when you go to a job, you are an object. I, I couldn't disagree more. Uh, honestly, when you go to a job, just because the corporate oligarchy has set it up so that you have to work as a wage slave in order to survive it doesn't mean you you discard your, your humanity if you're working with customers if you are doing any sort of customer service oriented job including cashiering uh, part of your job is to kiss ass to smile and to make the customer feel this way or that way you know, that's why they have the statement, oh, the customer is always right, da, 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 da. That's why this stuff is in place. Is it right? Not really, no. But it is reality. You know, people working in, in convenience stores, grocery stores, wherever in the service industry, are still human beings, whether they're on the clock or not. You are getting paid to be a tool. That's what you are. You are a tool to a company. Is it right? Again, no. I don't think it's right. But it's part of capitalism. It's part of this system. This is why a number of people are speaking against it. Regardless of their race, their gender, their gender identity, their sexual orientation, none of these things matter. You are still a human being. And, and when you start to say, well, no, they're on the clock, therefore they're objects. When you're on the clock, you're being paid to be a tool. You know, are you still a human being? Yeah, you're still a human being, but you're also a tool. You're a human being, but you're also an object. That's just how it goes. It's sad, it's, it's pathetic, but it's the way that it is. You know, that, that raises, uh, you know, the situation in our society where when people have to work two and three jobs just to get by so that they can pay their rent, and attempt to raise their children even though they don't really have any time like that. And they give up their humanity when they're on the clock. At that point in time, the only people who, who can be human beings are those who can afford to be human beings. You're right. That is the way that it is. And if we want that to change, we have to find other solutions. And that raises a question, at what price do we buy our humanity? Because certainly those who are at the lower end, economic end of the spectrum, they can't afford to be human beings anymore if, the, if they're objects as soon as they clock on. Again, this is one of the big problems with capitalism. Because they're almost always clocked on just to be able to make it so that they can clock on to be objects again. I mean, that really takes the concept of wage slavery one step more into making us true slaves. We are. That's why so many people say this. That's why so many people call this system a system of slavery. I mean, essentially, we never really truly ended slavery because it, the system morphed into what we have now. 
And for those that don't fit into white corporate culture, and I know I'm going to get the Riot Act read to me over saying that, white culture, but it's true. For those that don't fit into white corporate culture, it's even worse. We are owned by the corporations of which we are beholden to in order, in order for us to live long enough so that we can be owned by the corporations. This is why so many people are so angry with our system. And to put a bunch of crap on top of it, you know, we're not getting very good wages, we're not getting very good benefits, and yet the CEOs of these corporations are, are making, you know, are making a killing. Um, you know, we've allowed uh, our system to become just entirely corrupt. Um, in Michael Moore's uh, documentary, Where to Invade Next, he really, really goes into some detail about this. And I, if you haven't seen that, I, I recommend uh, torrenting it or getting it however you can and checking it out. If, if you need a copy, I can bring a copy over. I have a copy of it. Um, I mean, I highly recommend seeing this. And, and when you see how some other countries, uh, uh, what their working conditions are and, and what the benefits and, and all of the stuff that they get, you know, it wouldn't be so bad to, uh, you know, have to at least slightly put away your humanity for a period of time for your job, because at least you're getting something out of it. You're not having to work three jobs just to scrape by. No. When people clock on, they're still human beings. You don't give up your humanity just because you're attempting to survive. I, I cannot disagree more on that. You can disagree with our reality if you want. But that is our reality. And if we want it to change, we have to change some things about the system. We at least have to try to make the type of capitalism we have better than it is. And then to add insult to injury, um, you know, over the next 10 years, a lot of these jobs that people are getting minimum wage for aren't even going to exist. Automation is going to be taking over a lot of stuff. I mean, we can get all excited about how, uh, you know, drones are going to be delivering packages and we're going to have uh, uh, auto driving, uh, uh, you know, uh, computer uh, controlled, GPS controlled, automatic driving, what's the right word I'm trying to find, semis and, and other methods of transporting goods. Um, uh, some customer service jobs are going to be taken over by uh, software. Um, uh, even at fast foods, uh, ordering food is going to be taken over by you know touch screens. Um, you know it's going to leave some of the only types of jobs that humans do is uh, like phone customer support, which that's a really miserable job. Um, you know. Uh, a lot of jobs are going to be obsolete in 10 years. And the people that are going to be hurting the most are the poor. I mean, something eventually has to be done about this. Or the, the, the chasm between the rich and the poor is going to be so huge, there's not going to be any middle class left. And if we don't have a middle class, we don't have a country. We're done. Because the stuff that the, that the rich people make... Nobody's going to buy. There aren't going to be any customers. What, are they going to sell to other rich people? I mean, yeah, they, they can, but I mean, you know, we're, we're going to be in trouble soon. We are. We're, we're going to be hurting. And companies are going to do what they can to make their products for less money. We, we can't expect them to do differently than that. So eventually the system's going to have to change. And a lot of people aren't going to like the way it's going to change. Um, I think we will probably end up heading towards a one-world uh, government. And uh, a lot of things that we consider very important now, we're going to have to probably toss aside. We're probably going to have anti-blasphemy laws. We're probably going to have laws that state that, well, if you treat someone like shit, you can go to jail. It's going to be a very painful process. And there will probably be a lot of people suffering in, in the meantime, uh, and, and during that process of change. So, I mean, we've got some rough times ahead, we do. We also talked about other concepts. Catcalling is one that came up. 
and, and how you know, yeah, people have have this weird thing I've noticed. And it's not just your video. I've noticed on all the other videos and people making Facebook comments and other stuff. People seem to be conflating compliments with catcalling, and they're not necessarily the same thing. You know, I, I mean, if you're walking down the street and somebody's hollering out, hey, nice ass, baby, hey, suck my dick, how about these nuts, shit like that, that's catcalling. That's incorrect. If you're dealing with somebody and, and you're having an interpersonal communication and you happen to throw off, you know, that's a really nice boss you happen to be wearing. That's a compliment. And yeah, a lot of it is subjective. You know, if you just go around throwing out compliments at random people, you know, maybe it's innocent on your part. Maybe they're not taking it that way. Well, I mean, if you would have done one of these back and forth things like I'm doing in this video, um, this context would have been still there. Um, I've already suggested that, you know, if someone leaves a compliment to someone, if that other person doesn't take it as a compliment and they state that they didn't take it as a compliment, that, you know, if you go and still try to, to compliment them again or you get offended or, or something like that because they didn't take it as a compliment, you know, it, that's harassment at that point, you know? You don't, if, if, if they say they didn't take it as a compliment, you leave them alone, you don't bother them again, you, 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 you just you leave, you know? Um... It's not the time to try to tell the other person how they should feel about something. If you've said something, they've, they've taken offense at it for whatever reason, you leave them alone after that. But if you insist on your right to be able to just go out and do that without giving any regards to the other person and how they're taking it... But the problem here is you can't know how they're going to take it until you say something. I also gave examples too, you know, if it's obvious the person is really busy with something or they're stressed with something or they're already multi multitasking with something, that's not the time to bug them about it. But if it doesn't if it doesn't seem like any of those things are the case, there's no way for you to know unless you talk to the person, unless you tell the person something. And then if they say they're offended or they didn't take it the way that you wanted, you you, you leave them alone, you you say you're sorry or you, whatever, but you you uh you de-escalate the situation however you need to and 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 call it good you're treating them like objects once again we know how i feel about treating people like objects here's my view about uh treating people like objects if you think that you're above someone else then you're going to automatically treat them as an object if you think that you're below someone else you're automatically going to treat them as an object both sides end up treating other people as objects. Because, I mean, if you think you're below them, then you're going to treat them as this object, this thing that's unreachable above you. And, if, of course, if you think you're above someone, then they're this object that's below you. I mean, that's, it's just the automatic thing on that. So, I mean, a lot of this ends up being in the attitude someone has. Where do they feel that they are in contrast with others? If you look at people as equals, great, you know? It's, it's more of a subject-subject consciousness instead of an object-object consciousness. So, you know. You always need to consider the other person. You may be paying a compliment, the other person may not be taking it as a compliment. And if you're only concerned about yourself, you're being selfish. And you're treating them like objects. I mean, I agree. If, if someone doesn't care how other people feel, even if, when those other people show that they're uncomfortable or... Uh, it, it, it upsets them or whatever. If, if, if someone just doesn't care how others feel, no matter how they treat people, yeah, that's a pretty shitty way to go about things. And there are a number of people out there who do this. And it's shitty. And nobody is an object. Not really. There are points in life where we objectify others and where we are objectified. You know, I, and you talked about being gay and, and you're trying to pay compliments and put it... No, you don't need to put your sexuality into a closet. You just need to understand that if you're making sexually suggestive dialogue and or conversation with somebody, you might want to have at least an establishment of a relationship with them at first. Sometimes the compliment, sometimes the sexual objectification, ends up being the conversation starter. 
Sometimes you have no idea what you have in common with this person. It's not like you can come up to someone and just, hey, let's talk about politics. Hey, let's talk, oh, the, the, the weather is so beautiful today. I mean, you could bullshit someone or you could be upfront as to what your motives for talking to them in the first place is. And if they're not interested in the same thing, they have no interest at all, then, you know, then you leave them alone. I can't count how many times I've come up to guys and told them that I think they're beautiful, that they're gorgeous, they have a, a, a beautiful beard, that they have, that I like their build, that I like, you know, something on that order. And I've had some um, that will be, wow, I'm not used to a guy telling me this. I've had some, I've had a couple that have been uncomfortable. I say, hey, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to, to make you uncomfortable. I, I will leave you alone. I'm sorry for bugging you. I've had some that, that uh, take it really well, and they're like, well, thank you. Um, and, you know, I've also had situations where it went, it went pretty good. Um, but quite frankly, if I never would have done that sort of thing, I probably never would have had sex. Sometimes that kind of, of conversation starter is, well, a conversation starter. Um, if you're saying that certain types of conversations should be off limits unless you already talked to with, about other things, I'm sorry, that's really puritanical, Robert. If you're just walking around making sexually suggestive comments to random people on the street, that's kind of creepy. Well, call me Mr. Creepy then. I mean, it's not like I do it all the time. But if I see someone that I think looks awesome, I'm going to say something. If nothing else, they, you know, they might have a, a bit of a self-esteem boost because, you know, someone noticed them in a way that people normally don't. Now, maybe it's a little different for me because a lot of the people that I look at usually aren't considered that attractive. You know, I, I like the, the rougher faces. I like the, the people that look like they've really seen something. Um, I like heavier bodies. I like beards. I like, I like looks that are completely not Hollywood. I, I have no interest in the Hollywood sort of thing. So, I mean, a lot of the people that I will say something to are not even used to anyone uh, considering them attractive at all. So, I mean, this might be a little different. This, this might make this a little bit different. But if I'm to, put, to hold the same standards to myself that, uh, that you're holding to straight guys who have uh, stereotypical attractions, um, then, well, I mean, I hope you can see what I'm saying. You know, you may mean it innocently, you know, but I, and this goes heterosexual, homosexual, pansexual, it just, it doesn't matter. You know, you shouldn't be sexually suggested with people that you do not have a relationship with. Why do you think we should be living according to, like, Christian something or other? I mean, should we be following some sort of dogma or something? Again, it just, you sound kind of puritanical here, man, I'm sorry. To a certain extent. Now, it may be only a relationship a couple hours old, but you should at least establish something first before you start doing like that. Anything else is generally inappropriate. I'm sorry, man, but you sound like a fundy when you say that. I don't know how else to put it. You sound like a fundamentalist. Okay, it just, it, it's, if you're basically suggesting that, you know, well, you should only talk about sex at these times. You should only show interest in these things at these times. And I mean, why do you want people to live to, according to a bunch of rules like this? I mean, are you, I, I never knew you to be one that's a traditionalist. And that sounds like a very traditionalist kind of mindset to me. More importantly, if you start to establish that type and start to be sexually suggestive, you go, you know what, I really don't take it that way. You need to pay attention and say, you know what, all right, that's fine. Well, as I've said already in this video and in my previous video, I, I agree with you there. If you show sexual interest in someone and they, they do not feel the same way at all, you, you leave them alone. Otherwise, that's sexual harassment. 
you have no right to be sexually suggestive to people that you do not have that kind of relationship with. Yes, you do, Robert, and that's something you don't seem to get. It's if someone shows themselves as not being interested and someone continues, then yeah, that you don't have the right to do that, and that is sexual harassment. But until you know the other person is not interested, uh, you have the full right to do that. This is regardless of gender identity or sexual orientation, this is just basic human interaction. Sexuality, sexual wordplay, um, sexual objectification, those things are also part of regular human interaction. We are animals, we're not robots, and we're not these things that are supposed to follow God's law either. Okay, there, there was also interesting topic when we're talking about rape culture and I find it interesting on that part because we were talking about how you pointed out some of the cases uh, I, I point out there's like four or five cases I pointed out there where the women, girls were raped it was spread all over social media they were slut shamed and whatnot and you acknowledge that or you acknowledge you said those were extreme examples but you agreed with me when I started talking about, you know, how women are slut-shamed, you know, what were they wearing, were they drunk, um, they're kind of a bit of horrors, you're like, yes, society does that and that's wrong. And the problem I have with that is in these extreme cases, what you agreed was wrong, what society does, was the defense used in those extreme cases. Okay, this is rape culture. Some of the same things. Um, when it comes to the specific things of, uh, oh, what was she wearing type of thing. But the rest of it, most of society would never condone what was being done there. Okay, the, the extremes of this makes a pretty big difference. Um, it, put, putting pictures and shaming someone for being raped? What, what kind of assholes do that? You know, some of the people that I mentioned, let's say some of the Republicans who thinks, who think that the people who rape others should be put to death or be castrated. Okay, some of those people might be the same who might say something like, oh, what was she wearing? But they're certainly not the types of people who think that we should shame the person who was raped. Okay, it, it's, it's a totally, I, I mean, just, you know, you don't like it fine you don't like it i get it you know but i don't like false equivalence no i don't i don't like something being mentioned as if we're almost as bad as the middle east you kind of made that suggestion in your video oh we're just we're just a step away from the middle east really really no we're not not even close that's what we're talking about at least that's what i'm talking about i can't speak for any other human being but myself yeah, that's the funniest damn thing. You know, I do a video of my personal opinion, why I support feminism. And a, lot of, a whole bunch of people go and go, oh, no, I, I, you're, you're, you're trying to argue my personal experiences. I mean, that's why I tried to couch it in personal experience. I have seen this. I have witnessed this. I see this on the news. And that's what influences my opinion. See, I wish you would have made this video a back and forth. My footage, your footage, my footage, your footage. Because it would have been more thorough and you would have been able to address all the points that were being made. Okay, one of the things that you that you haven't uh, addressed, and you're, it, you're, you seem to be upset that, well, people are, are saying that I can't feel this way. Well, nobody's saying that you can't feel that way. But when you make the statement that you support feminism, these are why you support feminism, okay? You're showing that, okay, these are the reasons why you support these particular values that come out of feminism. But it still doesn't explain why you support feminism as a whole. Because feminism isn't just these things that you've mentioned. Um, you know, in, in my video response to you last time, you know, I was trying to talk about, well, you know, there are a number of things within Christianity that I think are good values. There are a number of things within even Islam that I think are good values. You, you can separate these things out, but you can take the good out of the crap and say, hey, these are good values. 
does that mean I would say, well, I support uh, Christianity or I support Islam? No. You know, there are things that I support within feminism. Does that mean that I support feminism? No. There are things that I support. There are, there are some things within the uh, men's rights movement that I support. Does that mean that I support the men's rights movement? No. You know, I think people are just asking you to have a little more accountability. If you're going to say you support feminism, it has to be more than these tiny little points. And then ignoring so much of the other stuff that, 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 uh, that seems to be coming out of feminism. Um, now, granted, um, you know, you can go by the dictionary definition, but if you go by the dictionary definition of a bunch of religions, it looks good, too. Dictionary definition of a number of philosophies, those look good, too. So, I mean, I guess it's just kind of asking for some accountability as to why you uh, say that you support feminism. Um, I don't think anyone is trying to say that you haven't experienced these things or that you haven't seen these things. And if there are people that are saying that, well, they're full of shit. Okay, we experience what we experience. So. Because, you know, now, I mean, essentially when people are trying to argue against why I have the opinions, you're, you're in, in a way trying to say that I'm not experiencing the, rea the reality that I'm saying I'm experiencing. Now, I realize you, Kazoom, are not doing that, but other people are, and it's just, it's, it's kind of bullshit, really. If that is indeed what people are doing, then that indeed is bullshit. I agree with you 100%. I, see, I think there was one other thing I wanted to address. Oh, yeah. See, this is, this is the one thing I wanted to address. I did say I like the concept of... We, we don't need to teach women how not to be raped. We need to teach boys how not to rape. And then I expanded on that thought by saying, you know, we do this by teaching about consent. See, that was one continuous thought. And you use video technique to interject and edit to make it look like it was two. But they are kind of two thoughts, okay? We have a problem in our culture with the concept of consent, and this covers everyone, not just men, not just women, but everyone. Okay, We have a problem with consent. I, I guess you could say that we have an anti-consent culture to some degree. I mean, we, we have this going on. Um, it's kind of part of our whole it's kind of what makes us look like uh, we're living in the old west when it comes to the way that other countries look at the United States I mean we have a major problem with this we do and I think that larger thing needs to be addressed if we try to zoom in on on it on one particular issue um, it's not going to take care of the larger problem and without taking care of the larger problem, the smaller issue won't be taken care of either. That's why I separated these things out. We have to put the smaller part on hold and address the larger issue at hand. Now I'm going to go ahead, since I like you, Kazoom, I'm going to assume you weren't trying to be disingenuous there, and you just got caught up in the moment. I think it's important, crucially important, that we address the larger issue and not the smaller one. If we address the larger issue, the smaller one will be taken care of automatically. All right. But you see, that was one thought. And if you want to make the argument that not all men are rapists and that, that yeah, I'm using that statement, it goes along those lines, that's a valid argument. I would accept that one. But to say, you know, to edit it, to attack the teach boys not to rape, and then they go on and agree with teaching consent, you know, because that's the whole thing. That's how we teach boys not to rape, is by teaching of consent. My point in this is to not just teach this to boys. We need to teach about consent to everybody. Everyone must learn more about consent. Everyone. It is a problem in our culture.
okay, this somewhat goes into the three pillars concept that I've talked about, you know. Our culture is based off of these three pillars. Manipulation, control, and ownership. Okay, now, if any one of those three pillars is completely destroyed, um, our culture kind of goes with it, and we'll have to kind of start over again. But we do need to work towards uh, towards that goal because our current way of doing things is not sustainable. And, you know, you point out a problem, give a solution. You know, but you try to break it in like uh, there are two separate things. No, there was a continuation. I, I, you know, like I said, you can make the valid argument. Not all men are rapists, so, you know, okay, fine. Where we teach people not to rape by teaching consent. You like that wording better? No, I don't, because you're still specifically talking about rape. Okay? You're still mentioning it as something we should zoom in on when it comes to the problem with consent. Okay? As I've said, we generally have an issue about consent. Um, we... This issue with consent uh, and these three pillars um, go into the way we do everything. The, it's the reason why we accept the type of, of factory farming that we do. It's why we accept some of the things about war that we do. It's why we accept a whole bunch of stuff. This issue of consent is huge. It's huge. And it needs to be addressed. And to just zoom in on, on just the rape part of it, it, is, it, it kind of does our entire culture a disservice. We're not really getting to the meat and potatoes of the problem. And, you know, like a number of other issues, if we just try to focus it on the rape part of it, um, the pushback, because the consent part is still a problem in the rest of our culture, the pushback will make any of those attempts futile. You know, we have to address the larger issue. We must. Either way, it's still that's my whole point. If we teach consent and, and we do that, then you won't find people going, well, she was drunk and I kind of wanted to, so I just stuck it in a little bit, you know, because they, they weren't necessarily taught consent. I don't know there's a lot of states out there that do not have comprehensive sex education and consent is not even remotely covered. I mean it's socially covered but not everybody pays attention. You can't just go around assuming that everybody knows these things because not everybody does. There are plenty of people who like to take girls out on the dates and then drive out on the country road because hey it's a nice little drive and when they get far enough out they pull the old put out or get out. And you know that happens. I know that happens. I've heard of it happening. I've heard people complain. You know, I have known of females. I didn't do this to them, but I have known females in my personal history who have gone to parties, got drunk, passed out, and woke up with somebody else's body fluids inside them. Nobody taught about that snot. They can't consent. Oh, there was no harm. I was just playing around. We dated, so you know, I figured she wouldn't have minded. And you see, these are things people rationalize their own poor behavior. But if you actually take them aside and teach them about consent, consent in general, not just about rape, but consent in general. You know, this issue with rape is not going to end unless we realize the issues around consent in general. In general. Consent to other human beings, consent with other animals, consent with other life, consent with how we are a part of the ecosystem on this planet. Consent. You know, all the way around. There's there's an entire attitude that needs to be that needs to be looked at and modified. They wouldn't well, they would have a harder time rationalizing their poor behavior. That's my opinion. You may disagree. I don't disagree with your general message, 
but I do disagree with the way that you're framing it. I think the way that you're framing it will not do any good. It, it's going to be futile. That's a great way to actually start dealing with rape culture, teaching consent. Start teaching people about, you know, just because she's dressed provocatively doesn't give her permission or give you permission to want to have sex with her, you know? She doesn't owe you anything because you took her out to dinner. Shit like that. We can teach these things. And sexual assault will go down to a certain extent if we do. Comprehensive sex education is a great idea. And putting consent and a lot of these things on top of just the base mechanics just makes it more effective. If we're specifically talking about in sex ed classes, you know, I can see what you're saying. I don't know how much good it will do if other forms of consent are not really looked at and it's just that specific type of consent. I mean, it can help, but if it gets pushed too much, there will be there will be pushback in some way. And then people will be doing things out of rebellion. And that could be that could potentially be even worse than what we have now. But you know, I'll give you that. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's not a bad idea to try. Anyways, these are my thoughts and opinions, and I know there are people out there who will be leaving comments, going, "Well, you didn't say exactly how I think about it, therefore you don't know what you're talking about." And I know who these people are. These are the people who think they have the right to go around correcting people on their opinions. They are people who think that they have the right to decide who gets to post and not post on social media. To be fair though, if someone's opinions are based off of things that are not facts, or are based off of things that are shaky, um, and you put your opinion out in the public, uh, it's going to be critiqued. Yeah, people are going to debate about it. That's just how it goes. I know who you are, and I lost respect for you a long time ago. That's why you're not being mentioned. But Kazoom, you still have my respect. We disagree, and as I've told you, told you before, to know me is to disagree with me. Everybody does from time to time. Exactly, and that's the way it is with anyone. So, I'm glad we have a healthy way of, of approaching this. Thank you. So anyways, for those of you who stuck around, thank you for your time. Those are just my thoughts. Um, that is a good question though. At what price do we buy our humanity? Again, I think that's more of a question about capitalism and how, you know, capitalism gets implemented versus, you know, other methods that we could possibly try that maybe haven't been tried in the past because, you know, there wasn't the technology, there wasn't the knowledge uh, that we have now um, to be able to try other methods. So, um, to me, a lot of it is a question about capitalism and the way that we implement capital capitalism in this country. Anyway, thanks for watching.